So here's a final video from this semester when we did uh, probability. So we take a look at this Venn diagram on uh, different races that these athletes have done. So how many athletes ran in the 200 meter race? So keep in mind there are some athletes that did the 200 and other events. So look at that whole group. That's four plus 11 plus three plus two. So that's a total of 20 athletes. How many ran in the 400 and in the 100, but not in the 200? So 400 and 100 would be here, but you want the ones that were not in the two. So that means that there was only seven athletes there, just using the diagram. All right. So if you see the N, that's intersection. And is the magic word, which means a lot of times when you see something like this, you're going to think multiply in some shape. U means union. The big word there was or, and then that would mean that you need to add things up. In terms of a Venn diagram, remember the intersection is the space here, and then the union is everything together. So if, we, if we're given these two sets, set A and set B, find the intersection of A and B. So in other words, what do they have in common? So A and B both have a 4. They both have a 6. And they both have an 8. So the intersection would be 4, 6, and 8. The union, let's just write everything they have together. So you don't have to repeat. So they have 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. Now, with those numbers that are in both of them, you don't have to repeat. You just have to make sure to include them. Two things are independent if one doesn't affect the other. I don't think that's apex. And then things are dependent if one does, uh, another way to look at it, influence the other. So a couple scenarios for you. What's the probability of drawing a spade, replacing it, and drawing an ace on a standard deck of cards? So the replacing it means that one thing is not going to influence the other. So these are dependent. So the probability of a spade. There are 13 spades in a deck of cards. I see the word and. You're telling me to multiply. Ace. There are four aces. The fact that we replace the cards means that there's 52 cards back in the deck. So now it's just a matter of multiply those two things together. So 13 over 52 times 4 over 52 gives you a decimal of about 0 0.019. And if you want to do that as a fraction, that's the fraction 1 out of 52. So either one of those, and now it's just that approximately. If you did it as a decimal point, 0, 1, 9. If you did it as a fraction, 1 over 52. Casey bought a bag of M&Ms. Contained 15 yellow, 10 red, and 8 green. So that gives me a total of 33. That is going to come in handy in just a minute. What's the probability of reaching the bag, pulling out a red, and then reaching it again and pulling out a yellow, assuming the first M&M is not replaced? So we want probability of red and yellow. So the probability of a red, there were 10 of those out of the 33. The fact that we are not replacing it means that we are down to 32 overall M&Ms and 15 of those are yellow. All right, so just pay attention closely to the wording here. So you have 10 out of 33 times 15 out of 32 to figure out what fractions you need to worry about. So that's about 0.142, and if we wanted that as a fraction, you could also write it as 25 over 176, and either one of those is fine. You could write it as either one. Two dice are tossed, what's the probability of getting a sum of eight? So when the two dice are tossed, remember, so the first dice can be a one, two, three, four, five, or six. The second dice can be one, two, three, four, five, six, and when you roll those two dice, you add those up. So in other words, if you roll a 1 and a 1, it's a 2. You have 3. A 4 and a 1 would give us 5. A 5 and a 1, 6, and so on. A 1 and a 2 gives us a 3. 
two and a two gives us four. Five, six, seven, then a six and a two would give us eight. If you roll a one, then a three, that's a four. A two, then a three, a five. Then you're just going to keep working your way through the table. So if you roll a six and a three, that would total nine. A one, then a four would give you five. You just keep working your way through it. Five and a one will be six. And then all the way to six and five, which would be 11. Six and one would be seven. Six and two, eight. Six and three, nine. Six and four, ten. Six and five, eleven. Six and six will give you a twelve. So what's the probability that we get a sum of eight? So there are five ways to get an eight. And then that's out of how many total rolls? There are 36 total rolls. Out of 36 total. So in other words, five out of 36. And if you wanted to do that as a decimal, that's about 0.139. So there's about a 14% chance that we could do that. All right. And then we talked about mutually exclusive. If um, there is no overlap, so here again we can think about uh, in a Venn diagram, that would mean the circles don't intersect in a Venn diagram, versus two events are inclusive if there is an overlap. So here, that would look like this. So the, the previous page, these things, the 100 meter and the 200, are mutually inclusive because there's an overlap. So if you draw a car from a standard deck of cards, what's the probability of getting a queen or a diamond? So the word or means we're going to add. Remember, when you do probability of A or B, we do probability of A plus the probability of B. But with the or, remember, there's always a chance that there's an overlap. So we want to take out the overlap so we're not double counting cards. So is there a queen that's also a diamond? Well, yes, there is. There's the queen of diamonds. So we want a queen or a diamond. So what that means, there are four queens. Or means add. So we will add the 13 diamonds. But because there's an overlap, we have to subtract it out. So do remember to subtract the overlap. Sometimes you won't have overlaps, but you should always consider is there one that could potentially be there. So that'll end up being 16 out of 52 uh, as a decimal, about 0 .308. If you wanted to simplify the fraction, it's 4 over 13. All three of these answers would be acceptable. It kind of depends upon what you would like to do. And then we finally finished with conditional probability. And then magic words there, given that. Remember, so the probability of A given that B occurs. So that's read probability of A given B has occurred. Magic words, given that. On a game show, 15 questions, 6 easy, 5 medium, 4 hard. Contestants are given questions randomly without repeating. So what's the probability the second question is medium given that the first was? So this one, kind of think through it. Well, we know we've gotten rid of a question already, so we're down to 14 questions. We know that the first one was medium, so we started with 5, which means we're down to 4. So 4 out of 14 would simplify to 2 sevenths. And again, for those of you that like to do things as decimals, it's about 0.286. So either one of those would work. Make sure that you're good with using these tables. These are important that, that you can pull all sorts of different probabilities from them. So we look at this table. Um, looks like some kind of connection maybe between sports and instruments. So what's the probability of randomly selected student plays sports? Probably the sport, given that they play an instrument. So we know that they play an instrument. So out of those that play an instrument, there are six of those. And how many of those play sports? It's three out of the six, or one half. So again, if you do decimals, you use 0.5. What's the probability that a randomly selected student plays a sport or? Oh, let's see the word or. So we have probability of sport 
four instruments. So the probability they play a sport. There are 12 students that play sports out of 24. Oh. Let me add, there are six out of the 24 that play instruments, but we always have to consider, is there an overlap? So here's play sports, here's play an instrument, and sure enough, if you circle those, which you are more than welcome to do if you see a question like this on the final, there's an overlap of three students. In other words, we need to subtract the overlap. So that'll end up being the 15 out of 24, which simplifies down to, we could do that as 5 eighths as a decimal. Um, well, this one's actually decimal, but it's only three places anyway. So all three of those answers would be acceptable. And then one final question. What's the probability a randomly selected student plays an instrument given that they do not play a sport? So look up in the table. Let me erase my previous work. How many students did not play a sport? Well, there's 12 of those. And how many of those play an instrument? Three out of the 12, which will simplify to 1 fourth or 0.25. So all three of those would be legit answers for number 80.